not judgment. Not I am better because of culture, but instead those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. In this moment, Jesus shows an unlikely love of reconciliation, a love for the other, a love that quenches the hatred, a never-ending love that satisfies need. And the Samaritan, she begins to think, maybe this is something I want. Yet, she is still unsure because of a foundational problem. She says, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus' response to her is an unlikely one, and at first glance it seems he is holding the Jews above the Samaritans, or even speaking directly about himself. When he says... You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. <clears throat> to a Samaritan, these would be fighting words. These are the words of hate. These are the words a Samaritan would expect from a Jew. These are the words that do not build a relationship, but instead eliminate the prospect of loving one another as God loves. Yet when we closely examine the text, Jesus is offering a new way, a different way of understanding worship, of understanding God. Jesus offers an unlikely alternative when he says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Jesus is saying worship is no longer about the right place, the right action, about being divisive, but worship is about glorifying God. Worship is about a diverse people coming together. A people who have different ideas, are different culturally, have different beliefs, are different in understanding what it means to worship God. Because it is first and foremost about glorifying God, about loving neighbor, about acknowledging that God is with us in a multitude of ways. And even though we are different, God's Spirit is with us. And somewhere in what we say and what we do are pieces of God's truth. God's truth is somewhere in our worship. Jesus speaks to the fundamental task of loving neighbor, showing compassion, giving water to our enemies. But he goes further in delving into the world that we hold sacred. What defines us? He directly challenges our understanding of worship. Jesus is not content with just loving our enemies or quenching our hate. We are not to just show respect and love to our enemies in public. We are not to just give them water, to just show compassion when they are hurting, to just stop by the side of the road and help, but we are to do something even more unlikely. Jesus is calling us to the most unlikely of actions. Jesus is calling us into having respect for our enemies, <coughs> those we dislike, those we disagree with, and how they, we, worship. The 21st century church is not far removed from the Jewish and Samaritan animosity. 
In fact, we may understand it just as well as the Samaritan woman. We enjoy claiming we are part of the one universal holy Catholic Church and that we worship God. Yet we allow our differences to breed disrespect, polarize our ideologies, and disregard how each other worships. We use language of us versus them. We begin to convince ourselves that we have the right way to worship. We worship correctly. We know what God wants. We are the ones who truly worship God. Others must be mistaken. We refuse to participate in each other's worship because we can't agree with how we pray. If the songs are right, we can't agree with who is leading. And if the sacraments are taken correctly, we allow our diversity to destroy our relationships. It is in this place that we hear the words of Jesus calling to us Calling, calling to us in an unlikely place, a new place of understanding worship. We are called to the unlikely place of respecting, of participating in each other's worship, learning from our differences, allowing ourselves to be challenged by the things that make us uncomfortable. By the things we don't understand. We are called to be a people united in our diversity, called to challenge each other, called to love one another, called to build each other up in the ways we worship. Because worship is not about us. How it makes us feel, about what we are comfortable with, worship is about God and what God does. Howard Marshall, a New Testament scholar at the University of Aberdeen, says that worship is about looking beyond the human actions and remembering that from the beginning it is God who takes the initiative in the creation of the world and the people in it, in providential care of them, and communicating with them in various ways. The Bible is the story of what God does and how people respond to Him, both positively and negatively. Worship is about God and not about us, which is what Jesus is stating in His unlikely words to the Samaritan woman. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship. We are the unlikely ones who are called by God to worship God in our diversity. Amen. Amen.